Welcome to the third segment on metabolic myopathies. In the second segment, we covered the glycogen storage diseases, which is the source of acetyl-CoA, which comes from carbohydrates. In this segment, we look at the other major source of acetyl-CoA in the body, lipids. Although they also result in difficulties with energy production, similar to glycogen storage diseases, fatty acid oxidation myopathies have a distinct presentation pattern that assists with their diagnosis. In the present session, we will once again reflect on the principles of cellular respiration discussed in the first segment to explain the patient presentation pattern within the fatty acid oxidation myopathies. We will then identify some of the more common forms of this myopathy and discuss their specific presentation patterns. To recap from the first segment, fatty acids transported to the muscle cells or stored within the cells are mobilized and transported into the mitochondria for oxidation into acetyl-CoA through beta-oxidation. Transport through the inner mitochondrial membrane requires the carnitine shuttle system and activity of the carnitine acyl transferase enzymes. Lipid metabolism plays a prominent role when carbohydrate stores have been depleted to a certain extent, such as after 20 minutes of exercise or in prolonged fasting states. As in glycogen storage diseases, fatty acid oxidation defects result in energy deficiencies that may lead to the production of reactive oxygen species and muscle damage, a condition known as metabolic crisis. The symptoms are therefore similar between the two classes. The patient complains of muscle pain and cramping, which in severe conditions can lead to rhabdomyolysis and proteinuria. The difference is the conditions under which each of these conditions occur. While the symptoms for glycogen storage diseases appear early into physical activity and decrease as the activity continues, with fatty acid oxidation conditions, the patient is fine in the early phases of physical activity and is more tolerant of high intensity activity, but notices symptoms further into prolonged muscle activity. These patients are also more tolerant of dietary carbohydrate, but struggle with prolonged periods of fasting or metabolic stress, such as when fighting off disease. A careful patient history can help to identify a potential metabolic myopathy and distinguish between errors in carbohydrate versus lipid metabolism. The first step in diagnosing a metabolic myopathy will always be the forearm exercise test described in the previous segment, even if the patient presentation is more in line with an error in lipid metabolism. It's a simple and inexpensive test which is highly effective in ruling in or out glycogen storage diseases. If the test comes back negative, with normal elevations in blood lactate post-exercise, more complex tests for fatty acid oxidation diseases can be performed. This includes an acyl carnitine profile test. This is the intermediate generated in the shuttling of fatty acids into the mitochondria. With errors in fatty acid metabolism, there is a buildup of this intermediate in the cytosol and ultimately into the blood. The sensitivity is not as strong as that for the forearm exercise test, but can be increased in the fasted state or when the patient is symptomatic for pain and cramping. Positive tests confirm the presence of a fatty acid oxidation condition, and the patient can be referred for genetic testing of the most common causes to determine the specific mutation. The treatment approach for fatty acid oxidation diseases is distinct from that for glycogen storage diseases. Because the issue is with the breakdown of fatty acids within the body, the patient is educated on limiting fats in their diet, which would otherwise be stored by the body and increase the risk of excessive weight gain and the comorbidities associated with obesity. Meals should contain sufficient quantities of carbohydrates and be spaced regularly enough apart to avoid hypoglycemia, which would increase the risk of energy deficits and oxidative damage to the cell. Hypoglycemia is also a concern during physical activity due to the increased rates of energy consumption. Carbohydrate loading is a strategy that can maximize glycogen stores prior to prolonged physical activity but the practice should be carefully monitored as excess carbohydrate within the diet will be converted to fat. Patients can also consume small portions of simple sugars, 
such as those found in sports energy drinks, at regular intervals during prolonged activity to replenish blood glucose supplies for working muscles. The most common form of fatty acid oxidation myopathy involves mutations to the CPT2 enzyme found within the inner mitochondrial membrane. As described in the first segment, this is the carnitine palmitoyl transferase enzyme responsible for hydrolyzing the ester linkage between carnitine and the free fatty acid once it has entered the mitochondrial matrix, freeing up the free fatty acid for beta oxidation. The disease results from mutation to the CPT2 gene found midway along the short arm of chromosome 1. It follows an autosomal recessive inheritance pattern requiring two dysfunctional alleles for the symptoms to present. Without the enzyme in place, there is a buildup of acyl carnitine in the cell, which can interfere with cellular function and contribute to muscle cell damage. Despite being the most common of the fatty acid oxidation myopathies, it is still exceptionally rare, affecting only one in 250,000 individuals. A less common form of fatty acid oxidation myopathy results from a defect in the ACADVL gene found on the short arm of chromosome 17, which codes for the very long chain specific acyl-CoA dehydrogenase enzyme associated with the inner mitochondrial membrane. This enzyme catalyzes the first step in beta oxidation, specifically targeting the long chain and very long chain acyl-CoA molecules. VLCAD deficiency can present with different severities that may involve cardiomyopathy and early death. The milder form appears specific to skeletal muscle and presents in late adolescence with the symptoms characteristic of metabolic myopathies. That concludes this segment on fatty acid oxidation myopathies. In the next segment, we will look at enzyme deficiencies found further downstream within the citric acid cycle or electron transport chain. These are classified as the mitochondrial myopathies.